Pride Danger is about as tight and efficient and witty a script as you're ever going to see in a film noir movie. So not only do you get a whip crack story tonight and beautifully directed by Robert Parrish, but you actually get to see it in these fabulous old Los Angeles locations. Some poetry for you. <laughs> Dialogue boiled hard is a scream when delivered as smooth as iced cream. When Dick Erdman spouts Bowers, noir poetry flowers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the second banana supreme, Mr. Richard Erdman. May I present a wonderful actress, one of the great philanthropic humanitarians, and the reason they invented Technicolor, <laughs> Rhonda Fleming. I am so grateful to be here tonight and tell you how grateful I am to see this one of a film like this restored so beautifully, to see it on this big screen, and to thank you and all the, the people that support uh, the... There they are. They're all of you. God bless you. Thank you, because I'm just thrilled to see, to see this film and so many out there being restored that would, would have been lost. And thank you so much to the... Uh, archives and, and to, to you who just done so much and just appreciate it. The fact I could be here tonight and it's a full house. Wow. Yeah, how about that? Wow. Just great. And of course I have to say I did get my my just desserts, didn't I? I, was, <laughs> I, mean, I deserved it. I, was, I love playing naughty roles. I really did. I played some really naughty parts and I loved it. <laughs> it was just fun because I really wasn't like that, but it was just a great... Uh, <laughs> so she said. But you know, I, I never got to work with this wonderful man who stole the darn movie. <laughs> He did too. I don't think he really did. But in the middle of that scene, where I got on my knees, when Dick Powell was on the couch, and I'm trying to talk him into taking me with him and so forth, I had a terrible attack. I had my appendix just almost burst. Now you wouldn't know. I looked at that tonight. I thought, wait a minute. In the middle of that scene, I had to. I told Dick. I said, I have to go. I have to go. I'm in terrible pain. He said, You can't go. This was his picture. You can't go. You can't leave. I said. I have to leave. I've never walked out in my life on a, on a film. But I knew I was in horrible pain. I called uh, my mother to come pick me up, and we had to go right to the hospital where I had an emergency appendectomy. You would never, I would never dream that I came back and did that, picked up that scene on my knees like that. Now that was, I must, in those days, I think they kept you out probably 10 days. So they had to shoot around me a lot, and you know who got <laughs> who got all the the, 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 the roles that went on. And he was so good. Well, I was in the hospital, and then I couldn't look at this film for a year, at least a year after I made it, because I remembered that, and I also remembered when we opened at San Francisco. I couldn't believe it. The things that happened. They opened it. I was supposed to be in the theater with Dick, with, uh, Dick, Dick, Dick Powell on stage at a certain time when I got a call from, my father lived in San Francisco and I got a call from the hospital that he was in the hospital and dying. I couldn't believe that this all happened to me in that, when I was making that film. I could, nobody, I had no, nobody to tell that I wouldn't be there with Dick Powell. I had to race to the hospital and see my father for the last time. So that picture, I couldn't look at it for over a year. And now I look at it and I said, you know, my dad's in a better place, and I'm just sorry he didn't get to see it when I was there, but it's a darn good picture. It really is, and everybody knows.